everyone. Welcome to episode number 630 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by me, Amelia Dalton. My guest this week is Wayne Lyons, Automotive Director at AMD. Wayne and I are talking all about software-defined vehicles, autonomous driving, and how AMD is furthering innovation in the many facets within automotive design, and the trends Wayne sees shaping the future of automotive design. So without further ado, please welcome Wayne to Fish Fry. Hi, Wayne. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thanks, Amelia. It's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me on. Absolutely. Okay, so how are AMD's hardware and software solutions enabling the transition to software-defined vehicles? And Wayne, what benefits does this bring to drivers and automakers? Well, so firstly, Amelia, AMD kind of has a a long heritage uh, in automotive, actually, over 15 years, in fact. We shipped over 300 million devices, and actually over half of them are into safety-critical ADAS systems as well. ADAS modules today, we're in forward-looking camera, we're in surround view, park assist systems, advanced sensors like radar, uh, 4D imaging radar and LIDAR as well. You know, so many different modules. But as as the compute centralizes to realize this software-defined vehicle, you know, we need the hardware to enable this software. And so our next generation platform, Versal AI Edge Series Gen 2, is actually 10 times the compute of our previous hardware. And this is what's needed really to realize the software-defined vehicles. You know, it's not only it's 10 times the compute, but it's actually got up to 10 real-time Cortex R52 processors as well, which is you know, really important as you start to integrate some of these discrete microcontroller functions. But we see a lot of companies, you know, actually producing higher performance platforms today to deliver, you know, more software content. But, you know, the difference, I think, in Versal AI Series Gen 2 really is this, the fact that we use adaptability in the hardware as well. So once you've got a, you know, a static design, you know, if you get a software bottleneck, you can't do a lot to kind of change that. But what we can do in our, with our adaptability is actually, you know, reprogram essentially the hardware to remove the bottlenecks in the software. So, you know, we actually have partners who are essentially delivering not just software over the air, but kind of hardware over the air because they're reprogramming the flexible programmable logic, kind of optimizing interfaces, reducing latency, and increasing the performance of their system. So, Wayne, with the increasing demand for AI features in vehicles, from autonomous driving to personalized in-cabin experiences, how is AMD enabling the next generation of smart cars? Actually, AMD has a long history in AI. Actually, our programmable logic and DSP slices, as we call them, really delivered the first generation of neural networks in the car, doing some of the original features in forward-looking camera and surround view to detect objects and warn the driver there. Now, these were then optimized into our first kind of AI engines. And now these kind of NPUs or neural processing units, they're actually termed XDNA within AMD. And that's kind of a nod to the Xilinx heritage of this, but it's being deployed now in Ryzen AI systems as well. So these kind of next generation laptops, uh, Ryzen AI is delivering many different features, enabling Copilot, Microsoft Copilot and other features within these uh, laptop and mobile workstation platforms. One of the cool ones actually I really like is that there's this kind of eye gaze correction. And what that really means is I can be on a Zoom call with my boss and I can be actually, you know, answering a text on my phone and it still looks like I'm actually paying attention and my eyes are focused back to the camera actually there. So for me, it's one of the coolest applications of AI to date. <laughs> but um, in a car, clearly that similar technology is identifying whether a driver is detra- um, distracted, you know, in a driver monitoring system. And so things like this for us, it's, it's about pervasive AI, kind of leveraging our investment in these MPUs that are used in the, late, the latest Ryzen AI Max devices to deliver next generation ADAS systems as well with our Versal AI Edge platforms. At CES, one example of this is we had kind of YOLO V8, which is a perception network, you know, for automotive, actually running uh, on a Ryzen AI. Because moving forward, we see engineers developing on the high performance mobile workstations 
and then deploying on our ADAS hardware. Wayne, beyond autonomous driving, talk to me about the other areas of the vehicle being impacted by AMD's technology. How are you working with partners to integrate your solutions into other areas in the car? We're actually seeing Amelia there. You know, people want flexibility and connectivity in every aspect of a vehicle design um, and deployment. And what that means is actually our devices, because of their flexibility, they can be deployed across the whole car, especially as you start to move to kind of zonal control and you're integrating functions in the vehicle. As I mentioned, you know, we're in several areas of ADAS today. Particularly interesting is the kind of the fast moving advanced sensor market, like these uh, 40 imaging radar and LIDAR. These sensors augment or supplement the camera to give even more information to the drive control system. And our flexibility is really enabling our partners to deliver really ultra high resolution safety systems there. But not only that, you know, outside of, as I mentioned, connectivity and, and ADAS and advanced sensors, we're also in these next generation IVI solutions as well, using our high performance Ryzen processor family. They're really delivering kind of an uncompromised in-cabin experience. And that's really kind of incredibly important when you consider the rollout of EVs, which is kind of allowing for a complete redesign of the in-cabin experience with multiple screens. But also, you know, the focus there with an EV is that you need to kind of be either productive or entertained during the time that you're charging your vehicle as well. So, Wayne, can you talk about AMD's partnerships with other players in the industry and how these collaborations are driving innovation? Sure. We have many ecosystem partners across ADAS and IVI. At CES, we showcased a a major ADAS perception partner who are are called Stradvision. Their SVNet delivers 3D networks for perception. As the vehicle's going down the road on the forward-looking camera, it's kind of doing very fast 3D object detection, even with a a mono camera is doing 3D object detection, segmentation, and then actually also generating accurate monocular ranging. So you get this overlay of um, how far away all the cars are in terms of distance from your own vehicle as well. So it's a really cool network. Uh, we were really pleased to showcase that with Stratavision at the CES show in January. In IVI, we announced Thundersoft. That was a partnership to address really this fast-moving IVI market in China where you know, there's a insatiable demand really for more and more information and screens uh, in the vehicle, especially these EVs in the future. And then also at CES, Electrobit um, showcased the next generation digital cockpit, also based on our Ryzen V2000 platform as well. Some of our partnerships extend as well out to car makers like Subaru. Subaru is actually on stage with us uh, at the launch of our Versal AI Edge Series Gen 2 announcement. And uh, you know, they were actually an- announcing the adoption of that platform for their next generation ADAS solutions as well. And so we're working you know, very closely with uh, automotive partners like that. And finally, um, we have a, a kind of a strong ecosystem of partners like um, Xylon. Companies like Xylon can actually optimize programmable logic and really remove the need for car makers to design all of this element uh, internally. Fantastic. Now, Wayne, of course, we should also talk about safety, which is paramount in the automotive industry. So how are AMD's technologies contributing to enhanced safety features in vehicles? So Amelia, uh, kind of our safety heritage goes all the way back to our 28 and 16 nanometer families, actually. Our 16 nanometer families achieved ACIL C, Charlie, but we also then delivered software test libraries to enable the application cores, which were the Cortex A53s, to achieve ACIL B for Bravo as well. And as part of that effort, actually, we just we didn't just stop there. We actually reached out and actually safety certified the ARM trusted firmware suite as well, because that's part of the software that would need to run in this platform. And that would also need to, as an element, would also need to be safety certified as well. So you know, not just our own technology, um, we're also looking into how open software can be um, certified moving forward, which is going to be really important in the future. Our latest Versal families, they, they kind of deliver ACIL D for Delta through a combination of kind of real-time cores and application processes as well. For these cores, really, you know, they're offering kind of groundbreaking features, not only kind of lockstepping the application processor, but actually delivering memory controller capabilities like redundant transaction, which is automatically 
creating these redundant transactions to enhance the safety of, say, critical code segments. So not just within the processing element, but also all the way out through the software as well. And then not only is it, you know, we're kind of focusing on safety, you know, uh, on the latest devices as well. We're deploying security features to achieve ISO 21434 compliance as well for, for security. So, Wayne, how is AMD helping automakers balance the increasing demand for advanced compute power with energy efficiency in their vehicles? When you add this additional compute complexity, you know, it's no good if your, your battery suddenly runs dry. So like other leading technology companies, kind of we follow a very aggressive drive to the leading edge kind of automotive qualified processes. And for us, it's a balance between the leading edge technology and the maturity to make sure that it's highly reliable, high quality, and also can be safety certified as well. But our latest Versal AI Edge Series Gen 2 is based on six nanometer technology to achieve even higher levels of power efficiency. So, you know, clearly that is really important for these next generation high performance compute platforms. The other thing though, is that at the same time, our adaptable technology also helps these EVs in the motor control and battery control systems take advantage of new advances like silicon carbide. This kind of delivers much faster switching speeds and much tighter control loops as well. So this all helps you to squeeze even more performance out of that battery there. In fact, our adaptable devices are even used in Formula E batteries, where, again, battery performance is essential. On a given day, it can depend on the state of charge, the open circuit voltage, the the ambient temperatures and aging and everything. So what they do, they run multiple models in parallel. As you go down the track, you you can then identify which one was the closest to the uh, performance of the battery. So then they pick the best one to predict the battery performance later on in the race. And, you know, we see this kind of technology likely to come into mainstream vehicles in the future as well. All right. So, Wayne, let's talk about the future. Looking ahead, what are some of the key trends that you're seeing shaping the future of the automotive industry? And how is AMD investing in research and development to stay ahead of the curve? So, obviously, the temptation here is just to talk straightforward about AI. I'll come to that in a moment. But actually, now, outside of AI, consolidating MCUs really is, is the key to the software-defined vehicle. And I think, you know, car makers are going to want to realize this uh, as much as possible to be able to enable this software-defined vehicle vision in the future. But at the same time, you know, day-to-day, they're dealing with these challenges within their industry, like varying rates of EV adoption in different regions. Our platforms kind of combine real-time cores, application cores, connectivity, and flexibility. We not only can aggregate a lot of ADAS sensors, but also we can adapt to legacy interfaces as well, which is going to be really important because, again, no one has a crystal ball and knows how much the EV market has become pervasive in the next five to 10 years. Clearly, it's going to grow, but we don't know at what level. And so what this actually allows you know, car makers to do is they can adapt to, you know, and, and fit onto these simplified zonal EV architectures but also they can map to legacy ICE architectures as well, because we don't know how long you know, some of these are going to be around in, in mainstream vehicles, but we're seeing the adoption rate change from, from region to region. And then you know, in terms of AI, clearly we need higher performance and better energy efficiency. We, we were talking about that a moment ago. So we're investing a lot and actually deploying what are called micro data types. So even our latest ADAS devices, this Versal AI Edge Series Gen 2, actually has support for these micro data types. And and what it does is kind of compared to a typical data type like Intate or FP16, it uses things like MX6 and MX9. This allows them to kind of double their performance or half the power in some cases by switching to these efficient data types. And actually, they don't really lose, you know, any noticeable loss of accuracy in the process as well, which is really important there. So they get much better kind of bang for the buck in terms of performance or, or energy efficiency you know, without really losing uh, or compromising the accuracy of their neural network. Fantastic. Well, Wayne, it is time for your off-the-cuff question. So if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there, what would you have? It, beans on toast. Uh, coming from the UK originally, It's a popular go-to dish. It's pretty straightforward and easy to make. They were talking about these kind of Heinz baked beans from from the UK. 
every time I go back to the UK, kind of import them over to the US, to California. I've kind of been caught up, um, you know, importing them so far, but uh, usually the go-to meal, it's pretty straightforward to make. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Well, Wayne, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, thanks again, Amelia. Appreciate it. Well, folks, that's all I've got for this week's Fish Fry. If you'd like even more information about AMD Automotive Solutions, I've included a slew of links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash eejournal. If LinkedIn is more your thing, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn, and we are also on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon, too. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series, hosted by me, and our new animated series called Libby's Lab. And of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, make sure that you subscribe to this here podcast on Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or just about any other podcasting platform to listen to some exciting upcoming episodes. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of May 2nd, 2025, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.